Welcome to Lizzie's workshop and my second project for the Craft Shack design team. Today I'm going to be making something with a theme called Back to School. And the project that I'm making is going to be these homework trays. So I went to our local home decor store and I found these wooden trays. And um, I do like the raw wood kind of look of them, but I wanted to use them for my children, so I wanted to decorate them up a little bit. So I started off with the mixed media kit from the Craft Shack and this is the decorative napkin that came in that kit and so what I'm doing is I'm I'm ripping it all up and separating it all out into kind of the the general color of each ripped up piece and it might not matter it might matter um, in the end I don't think I end up using any of the butterflies so I guess it does matter a little bit we um I did ask my daughter's opinion on this one since it is going to be used for her work and so it came down to what she did want and what she didn't want which was kind of an interesting um, prospect. I usually don't ask my children's opinion about things but because this is directly for them I figured that um, the more they like it the more they are likely to use it. So I go through and this had six panels and I really wanted to actually keep a couple of the panels and not rip them up but when I came down to it I was really engrossed in what I was doing and um, enjoying the enjoying the whole pro, um, process of it and just kept ripping and ripping. The nice thing is that I now have a stack of butterflies that I can use on a different project. So for my daughter, she really loves nature, she really loves science, and that's why I grabbed onto this um, decorative napkin to start off with. And that that was um, the flowers and the butterflies and all the organic kind of stuff in there. The next paper that I chose for her tray is the hymnal paper. And it's not necessarily the specific hymn that's on the page, it's more about adding music to the um, music to the the page to the box. Um, she kind of is a very active, um, busy, wonderful child, and she always seems to have her own tune of music in her head. So I thought the music was very fitting for her for this project. The next thing that I'm going to add is the there are pages from an almanac. Some pieces are calendar, and some pieces are just lists of numbers. And the reason that I chose this for her is A, because it's very absorbent and would give a totally different color to it, to the pieces that were on there. And the other part of it was that she um, loves to do math calculations in her head. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing because I hate math. And I struggle quite a bit with it, with it and often get her to remember things for me or to remember phone numbers for me or to you know do a little bit of math for me about how much change I need at the store but she's quite young still and she just has this this love of numbers so all I'm doing is I'm I'm creating the front of the box so this is what's going to be seen on the edge of the counter in the kitchen and so we have a, a bar that we put all the kids stuff on when they get home from school and so these boxes will sit on the bar and they will empty their lunch kits and all their paperwork into these um, these boxes. So I'll be making one for my daughter and I'll be making one for my son. So I always love odd numbers and so that's why I've gone through here and I've pulled off the five red flowers. I couldn't decide as I went on from the from the napkin it looked like a nice summary picture um, when it was all set together and now that I'm actually I've ripped it all apart I kind of feel like it looks more like poinsettias. <laughs> so I, either way it's wonderful the flowers are fabulous but I kind of wonder what kind of flower they are now that I'm looking at them. And then I just kind of patched in and covered up the wood in the middle there. So then I'm going to flip to the next side and I'm going to just go randomly. The flowers I'm not going to really use except on the end here. And then the rest of it I'm going to just, um, you know, grab randomly and, and patch them all together. I'm going to try not to have anything that's side by side, but um, it doesn't really matter in, in the end. It's just a collage. So I'll just keep going all the way along that side and, and add that in there. So one of the big the reason that I'm doing this project first for my back to school stuff is that 
When my children come home from school, they often just ditch their backpacks at the door and then the next morning when we're trying to get ready for school, we end up going, well, what homework did you have? Oh, none, they say as I go sort through their backpacks and they always have something that they're supposed to be giving to me, either it's homework or I have to sign their agenda or it's their library books or it's their reading program or or any of that stuff. There's always something in the backpack for, that mom should see. Um, my children are still very young, so once they get a little bit older, maybe there won't be, but um, as it sits right now, there is almost always, every single day, something in the backpack for mom to see. So this tray will probably help us in, I say probably because it'll take some time to establish a routine, but this tray will probably help us in um, having one central area for things. So. Um, I can just grab the tray, put it on the table, we can sort through each kid's tray, you know, in the evening after supper, or, you know, while while I'm making supper, dad can sort through the tray with the kids and do any homework and sign any permission slips and all of that stuff, you know, and, and it'll all be in one place. If we're looking for their lunch kits in the morning, they'll be sitting in the tray, we fill them up, take everything from the tray and put it in the backpack and off we go. So I'm hoping that that will really um, decrease a lot of the stress around what goes in my backpack, how much stuff goes in my backpack and all that stuff. So what I'm using here is I'm just using a golden matte medium and um, I do want it as a matte. I did not want this as a gloss because I didn't want anything being sticky to it so I did want it as a matte and I'm just um, gluing it on and saturating it nicely and, and so on making sure the wood is all covered on the edges here. And it kind of seals the wood in as well. And because this is raw wood, it's taking a little bit more of the matte gel than normally it would. If, it, if I had sealed it first or if I had primed it first, then it would take less of this medium. But I didn't do any of those things, so it's really sucking it up fast. So the next thing that I did is I did go all around the outsides of this box, but because it was wet, I didn't show, I didn't record it because I had to wait and then come back and then dry it and all that stuff. So after the sides are done, I go to the inside and um, I'm not really paying attention to what goes where. I'm just taking things and randomly glopping them down. So I'm going to put some of the stuff on the wood, then I'm going to go over top and seal it in. And I'm just going to keep doing that, make a little bit of a mess on the on the bottom portion of this and then keep going. And all of these pages came from my um, mixed media kit from the Craft Shack. They all came as the, the old book pages or and the decorative napkin and stuff like that. It's all part of the mixed media um, uh, there's a sample pack of the old book pages and die cuts and shapes and I'll use some some die cuts and shapes later on as well. So yeah, as you can see, I'm not really paying attention to what goes where or what direction and what weighs up. I'm, I'm not looking at any of that. I'm just going and, and plunking it all down and gluing it down and I'm just trying to cover that base a little bit and it doesn't even matter if all the wood is covered. I'm fine with the wood showing through but I did want the wood to be a little bit more protected and have another layer on there because it is quite slim. Um, if I left the wood just as it was, I excuse me, I envisioned that when they thumped a binder into it or something it would crack the bottom and so giving this the um, matte gel kind of layer and the pa extra paper layer it's not really a structural component but it is an elastic component so um, in the event that it does get thumped it's not going to destroy the whole thing it's going to have a little bit of elasticity to it because of the, the matte gel and this is a, a pretty light matte gel it's not a heavy one at all. So I did fast forward. It took me about half an hour to 45 minutes to do that and I didn't think you wanted to watch the whole process so I did use the magic of video editing for skipping past all of that. And see there are there are parts of the wood that are still showing and that's okay. I like it. I'm happy with how it turned out. And then whatever was left in my container I just kind of sealed in the corners a little bit and I sealed a little bit of the wood because I plan to um, paint the inside of the box, the inside edges of the box, and I wanted to have it sealed a little bit so it wouldn't take so much paint. So now I've gone over and I've gone into um, 
my sample packs of things and there is ribbon and lace in that sample pack and this is one of the ribbons that I had in there it was a really pretty it's a white um, white lacy ribbon and then it's got a yellow actual ribbon threaded through the lace and I just I love this kind of ribbon I use it a lot and the reason that I like it so much is that um, lace has this delicacy about it and then every time you put glue on it you're gonna see the glue in some way either it's going to obscure some of the details or something or you can only you know show the edge of it you can't show the whole ribbon without it showing really nicely but if there is a ribbon that weaves through the lace then that hides any kind of medium that you're using to glue the lace and the ribbon down with and it also adds an extra color or an extra bit of detail to your project so I had just tied that that in a bow in the middle of the, in the middle of the ribbon, and then I just went through and uh, and you know put down the ends. So now what I'm doing is I've grabbed my piece of burlap, and that's from the mixed media kit as well. And I've punched out this tag shape from with one of my Stampin' Up punches, and I'm just tracing the shape on the back. And then I'll grab my scissors and cut out that little label. My scissors broke. My favorite scissors broke. <laughs> I had to grab another pair. Um, I say my favorite scissors because I only have a collection of about 50. So um, anyway, so yeah, I just went through and I just cut really nice with my, I guess they're kind of a sewing scissor kind of thing. And um, then I took it and it's got a cardboard backing on it. And the cardboard backing doesn't come off. It um, but it does allow you to adhere it really nicely. I didn't I didn't record, but um, on that tag I wrote the words the word hers um, because it's for my daughter, so I wrote hers and I wrote it in Stabilo pencil and then I got a little bit of water on it and, and um, liquefied it, but um, it didn't do what I wanted it to do. It didn't turn out the way I wanted it to turn out, and I had missed recording it anyway. So I'll go over it with a sharpie later. The butterfly that I just inked with stays on ink there that's down on the table now, um, that is one of the shapes that came in my mixed media kit. It comes with uh, die cuts and shapes, and this is one of those die cuts. Cute little butterfly, and it's kind of, it's it looks white because my my light is overexposing, um, my work light is overexposing the video, but it's a very very pale pink. So then I'm just kind of gluing everything together in a mass and. I normally wouldn't I, I normally wouldn't have done it exactly like this, but my daughter had said I want this here and I want that there and I want this other thing there because I had laid out the components on the workbench with like before filming and um asked her opinion. And so when she told me exactly where she wanted things, I decided I would just go with the flow and see where her creative engine went and hopefully she'll actually use the box, which will be awesome. So then I just added my heavy gel to this, it's a, like a 3D gel, to the metal shapes and it will dry in there nice and solid and hard. I was going to balance that by putting it up top and having it stick out over the edge of the box, but um, I reminded myself to follow my daughter's directions. So. That is my big clump for hers and then I'm going to go back to my mixed media kit and I'm going to pull out some more of this 3D um, matte gel and then I'm going to add some of the elements that came in the um, art ingredient sample set, sampler set. And so for this project I'm adding in gold mica flakes because my daughter loves things that glitter and bling and all that. So I'm adding in those gold mica flakes and um, then wherever I have just a little bit of extra stuff, I'm going to, a little bit of extra um, matte gel, I'm going to go in and I'm going to add some of the glass glitter. And the glass glitter I think is the, the pearl color. These are art ingredients by Finnebear, I believe. So the mica flakes, um, I did need to tap them down a little bit because when I when I um on a different project I've moved the project and it didn't stick as well as I had thought it was sticking and so then I ended up with 
uh, well, my mica flakes falling off and I didn't really like that. So this time I tapped them down a little bit with my um, spatula and let it let it set for a minute. So then I'm going to add a little bit more of this matte gel and then I'm going to um, put on the glass glitter. So here's the Sharpie. I've, I'm going over it in there so that's a little bit more clear to, that it says hers. I actually, I didn't, I, I wasn't really inspired by a lot of the stuff in this kit initially because it was gold. A lot of it had was gold components. And so I wasn't really sure where I would take this whole kit because um, there's gold sequins and there's gold um, mica flakes and then there's the glass glitter and and um, glass beads are kind of the, they're the butter color and they're kind of a goldy color as well. And I always have shied away from gold. But as I'm working my way through my mixed media kit and I'm using the products, I'm realizing that they're really, really versatile products and I can put them on anything and it's not about it being gold, it's about adding the bling. And that has made it so that I'm actually thinking that I'm going to need more of these supplies and more of these gold hints of things on all of my projects. Well, not all, but on a lot more of my projects um, going forward. And that's really big for me because um, getting the mixed media kit has allowed me to sample small amounts of things where normally you would have had to buy a much larger um, package of them and then the large package sits in your craft room and you never use it so I'm really happy to have been able to um, sample the small bits and pieces of things because if I hadn't then I probably wouldn't have bought the products and that's one of the really amazing benefits of this mixed media kit is that she's a, she has a huge list of things that go into into these uh, kits. So when it comes to like the Prima Art Basics for like texture paste kind of stuff and the, and the other mediums, you get to pick which ones you want to try. Um, for example, you get a you get a sample of a chalkboard paint and that's what I'm using right now is the chalkboard paint and this one is called Golden Olive. I love this color. I think I'm going to have to buy like a jug of this color <laughs> because this olive is just so fabulous. It's a, the golden olive. I love it so much. I also have a lot of the other chalkboard paints and they go a long way. Um, they are a fabulous paint and I, I just, I love them. I use them quite a bit. I even use them in my art journals and on my altered objects and I water them down for spatters and stuff like that. So um, they're definitely a, a great purchase. And that's what I mean, like if you just want to try out all these products, you just go and order the mixed media kit and then you've got everything sitting right there that you can just pick and choose from for each project and decide what you love and what you don't love and what you need, need, need in your craft room and what you don't need. There's so many times where as crafters we just go and buy huge amounts of things and then it sits there because it, we're uninspired by it because it was an impulse buy. But um, in this case, um, there really isn't the option of it just sitting there because it's in such small amounts that you just end up, oh, well, I have this tiny little bit of this. I might as well get rid of it. Oh, that looks fabulous there. Now I got to go buy the big jug. <laughs> so it is a, it's a fabulous idea. I love this mixed media kit. So um, I've just gone through and I've added this paint and I didn't want to add the paint over the whole thing because I wanted all of everything to be seen still and just add a little bit of a border. So there's the up close of everything once it dried. So here's a pile of stuff that came out of my mixed media kit. I'm now doing the boy version of it. And so I've got these pages and I think, I'm not sure what kind of book they're from. They seem a little bit like a, some of them are maybe a play. Um, some of them seem a little bit more biblical. Um, it doesn't really matter. My son really, really loves delving into books. And that's why I, told, I picked pages that were written word. Um, the other pile there is pages from an atlas and he loves playing with a globe and he loves playing with all kinds of things. So um, the world travel globe kind of thing that really worked well and the written word worked really well. And he really liked those pages from the kit so that's why I used them. 
I never really involve my children overly in my crafting. I do do crafting with them, but I don't really involve them in my crafting. So this was a really unique experience for us because it's my crafting, but it's for them. So having them involved in it was really um, important to me, but it also seemed really important to them, and they seem to be feeling very valued by me including them. I guess I'm going to have to do that more often. So through the magic of video, because you already saw this whole process with the hers box, um, I'm just going really quick and doing it, you know, um, editing everything out because you you kind of understand I think the concept from the other box and that's just what I did I went all the way around the outside edges with the two different kinds of papers and um, sorted all through them ripped them up added them tried not to put the same colors side by side and then I did the bottom of the tray and I left a lot of wood on his because it's a boy tray so uh, the other one I had three different kinds of papers. On this one I only had two kinds of papers and I like thing, thing, all my elements to be in odd numbers. And that's part of the reason that I left the wood showing was that it was my third element in the collage aspect. I didn't do it on the sides but I did do it on the, on the bottom there. So I wanted a black chalkboard paint but I didn't have a black chalkboard paint and so rather than going out to the store and buying a black chalkboard paint I decided I would just use my black gesso. And this is a, a golden black gesso. I buy a lot of golden products. If if I don't if I can't find exactly what I want in an art basics or um, in a Finnebear product in a smaller container, then I just go out to uh, the art and drafting store and get a golden product. Which that's it really they are really expensive, so I don't expect that everyone's going to go out and buy golden, but um, I do like their products. Um, I find that a lot of Finnebear's products are quite similar to Golden products um, and um, I really enjoy all of the Finnebear products and the, how they come in small containers so that I can um, I, nothing was ever going to dry out and I can often leave the lids open without causing any trouble and stuff like that so that's how I go, how I roll, how I art <laughs> So I'm not doing full coverage, but my son really loves that black. Um, it's his favorite color. It's been his favorite color for several years now. And so I wanted it kind of a little bit heavier on there, but I wanted it to kind of have a shabby look. And then I kind of pondered going around the outside of the, of the frame with it, but I didn't bother. I'm showing you I forgot to, to video how to turn the video on while I was... Um, gluing down on the front here, but there there were these two die cut frames that came in my kit, in my mixed media kit, and so I took those frames and I cut them up to give a little bit of a, uh, you know, a little bit more texture to this front cover or front of the box, and then I cover I in order to emphasize that the frames were there, I scuffed them up a little bit with the um, black gesso as well. So then I went through, Benny, my son, went through the metals, my metal collection, and pulled a whole bunch of stuff out of my metal collection. Now, you can get metal from anywhere. You don't have to go and buy it in a store. There are a lot, there's really nice design stuff in stores, but take these two objects I just put down there. That washer is from an Ikea package, the, the big round package flat one. That little wrench is from an Ikea package. You know you get little tools in every single box that you get from Ikea? Well, because you have to assemble your, your furniture yourself. Well, I have so many of those little wrenches and I have so many of the little uh, Allen keys that I just, you know, latch onto those. The other things that are in here I believe are either from Tim Holtz, uh, Recollections from Michaels, or they're from um, Finnebear's uh, Mechanicals. Some of them are from a class I took from Finnebear, and they're just kind of the leftovers from that. So here again, all I'm doing is saying, oh, I've got this little package of stuff I need to get rid of. Why don't I throw it on here? The colors are kind of similar. And so what I'm adding here is the um, heavy gel 
It's like a 3D uh, matte gel, and I'm adding the micro beads, and this color is called Splash, and it's really, really fabulous. But once again, I'm tapping it down just a little bit because I wanted it to stay in the in the gel. I didn't want any of those um, super electrostatic beads bouncing anywhere on my workbench because they, I'll find them for a year. I know I will. And, you know, I could have gone over with the... Um, black gesso again over the metal and then scuffed it up and painted it and put a shine on it and the reason that I didn't is that my son told me he just wanted to see all the little pieces on there when I took out the um, the gesso and I was going to put gesso over it in black and then I was going to bring out the metallic things he's like it's already metal mom don't wreck it <laughs> so I so I didn't wreck it the next thing that I'm doing is um, in my mixed media kit I had this clear crackle paste and I'm trying to put on a thick layer so I'll get really heavy duty solid crackles but I'm not going to get that. I'm not going to get really big crackles and that's okay. Um, I was trying to figure out the structural integrity of adding the crackles to it and if it was practical to add the crackle paste to it. but. Um, I ended up just putting on these layers and as they dried they um, sucked into the different lines and everything and I really like that it's just just a tiny bit of extra texture to this whole project. So that's the inside of my his box. There's his little collection of mechanical stuff and you can barely see the crackles there but they're there just that little bit of extra texture. There's the inside of the hers box, what her little arrangement looked like after it was dry, all the glass glitter and mica flakes, and that's what the sides look like of these pieces. Thank you for joining me on Lizzie's Workshop.